Yeah, Coach, um, just uh, was going back over things, and, uh, you know, they were in the one and the two when the defense rose up for you. Uh, you know, what happened in the, the, the first one, start the game, and then uh, after the big game, the defense regrouped itself. Yeah, and that's what you have to do. You got to play every down. And it's, uh, you know, they made a play, and they got down there in the big pass uh, before the half and uh, stopped them on the run. And then, you know, the ball came out for progress. You know, those are the things you, you assess, whether you want to take a timeout there or not, let it play out, try to put more stress on them, and then be able to back them up and uh, make them kick a field goal. So that was big, not, not letting them punch it in there. Um, Obviously, the first drive of the game, too. They made a couple plays. Uh, we needed to settle down, and credit to them. And they got down there, and we got the big stop when we needed to, and they went forward on fourth down, and we showed them a couple different looks. And I think it made them hold the ball a little bit. Would that have been, if it had not been within two minutes, would that have been a situation you would have challenged? You usually don't win the, I mean, the forward progress. Yeah. And that's a hard one to. So, I mean, again, I mean, it's, it can go either way. You know, if you reach the ball over and you see you know, call touchdowns, and you guys got to keep competing and you can't be upset when you don't get the call. That's a tough call, you know, with the forward progress. And that's not a criticism at all. I'm just, it's what it is. When you look at, it seems like every fourth quarter there's some sort of ball handling situation with, with you guys at this point. How much of that is Marcus? How much of that is maybe Drew Dahlman? How, how, where, where, is, where are well, things with I mean – been something different every time and I know on the on the surface it's it's happening and so we, we will do a lot of different things to to fix it uh, there's a lot of things I think that have improved but I mean you can't deny the fact that we something has happened and it's been different different scheme every time too so we'll certainly uh, we already have I mean I'm, it's not that we haven't before but I'll do some things different I'm not gonna get into the scheme of it but yes but it's been something different every time so uh, yeah, we got to get it fixed. How much of that the four, that fourteen run sequence that you guys mm -hmm. had third fourth quarter? How much of that was because of the way the passing game was or was not working at no, that point? I mean, it just it, we were running at a pretty good clip, so kind of practical. Why well, pick it up? Nothing new. Anything. It wasn't an indictment or anything else. So, I mean, it's a pretty matter of fact. Uh, but we've got a lot of faith. I think you can certainly wasn't perfect. The stats are what we are. We can do a lot of different things, and I think for the most part this year we've been pretty decent. Um, you know, we've, we've shown a lot of different looks. We've done, you know, moved launch points all over the place. And you know they're going to adapt, but we can also go traditional. And, I, and there were some early throws uh, in the game uh, and traditional drop back uh, that I thought we were decent at. And, uh, and there's a lot of little things that add up, too, that can affect the quarterback. So we've got to be a little more in sync, and we will. Uh, it certainly wasn't our best game in terms of timing and spacing and a couple of little mistakes there that we all got to do a better job of. But at the end of the day, we found a way. And when we needed it, uh, it wasn't an easy throw he had to OZ late in the game either. But when you, I don't know what the official time was between throws, but it felt like it had been about an hour. <laughs> and for him to be able to make that throw off balance uh, when you needed it and you had to. And the other thing I'll say about Marcus, he got us out of some things yesterday too. Play made to Parker Hesse, play extension. He had an easier throw. Again, he felt it. And uh, to be able to flip his body around to hit that ball to Hesse was pretty impressive and, and got us out of the other thing where, where we would have been even further off track and uh, avoided some sacks and, and threw the ball away. And those are, that's, as dumb as that may sound, when you throw it away, it keeps you out of sacks and momentum changing plays. Like you, to one of you're talking about the, the ball handling issue. We get a look, have a chance. We thought to, to uh, you know, there's, and I won't go too specific in the schemes, but there's a lot of options on the play and get the look that we saw to get to this uh, certain uh, play. And obviously, you, everybody saw what happened with the ball. But to not take a sack there was, was huge. Even though we didn't get the touchdown, I mean, that, that's a huge momentum changer. Get back there, and then, he, then you're super, really off track and, and making that field goal much more difficult than it needed to be. So five guys that, that in theory could come off by our – this week, what are any of them? Yeah, a couple of things. I, I was waiting for D. Light to give me, ask me an injury uh, report. Um, that's coming. Well, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and answer it now. So, uh, Cordell Patterson, we'll, we'll put him on uh, IR to return. Um, 
the minor procedure this morning that uh, will help him long term. If it was something that I thought that was going to be significant long term, I'd, I'd go in more specifics. But he will go on IR with the plan for him to return. He, he got no, he's been managing, and then you know, again, I'm not not the doctor, but you know, you're trying to weigh all that, and there's nothing that he did that put him at any further risk. It's just you got to assess, bro something that you want to have week to week and you know how, how's it going to go and we got a great medical team and, and CP felt I don't hate to talk for him but obviously he would he would have played if that were the case Mike and it's just something that you feel be, will help help him more importantly in the long run and, and help the team so I think that's worth getting up because he during that 14 play sequence he was not in at all he only think of one snap after that I wasn't sure if he had re-aggravated it at some mm -hmm. point I wouldn't necessarily call it that, but um, again, I think you know to be where he wants to be at his maximum uh, effectiveness, that he had a little minor procedure today. And I wouldn't call it minor every time you get something. I don't want to make light of that, but he had a procedure done, and we, we expect him back sooner rather than later. Well, you know, with him and uh, well, yeah, it's a minimum of four weeks, and right. so we'll see what it goes after that, and we'll uh, bump Caleb Huntley up to the active. And, uh, you got to be pleased with the depth at that spot. And Absolutely. What they, they've done uh, thus far with those three guys. Like yeah. Moving forward. Keith Smith's playing really good football for us, too. And then, you know, we get an opportunity um, coming up to get Damian back. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's another option, not this week. but And then the other guys you're talking about, Mike, uh, we'll just assess. You know, we don't have to make a decision. Um, expect uh, Isaiah to be back sooner than later. And we'll just arrest those guys. We'll continue to assess and listen to the doctors and keep communication with them. When you're making those decisions with IR, it plays into the health of the guys you currently have and maybe in certain, in some cases, how those guys are playing that are currently on the 53. Well, there's a lot of different scenarios that can pop up, you know, but it, most importantly is the health of the player that's on IR, where they're at medically. Medically, you know, mentally with it, that's a big part of it too. That's why I don't give a lot of timelines. Everybody's body is different. Sometimes you get unnecessary narratives on guys. If you, uh, you know, somebody says that, hey, I had that injury. That's a two to three week injury. Well, what if it takes a guy four weeks? And nothing wrong with that. Or if a guy comes back after a week, is he, you know, is he some kind of superhero? You know, that's it's all relative. So um, I feel really good. We got a really good medical staff, sports performance staff, and, and those guys are all in there. They've been working. Well, as we went back on the film, saw the interception with Marcus. What did you see? Was it more of a route wasn't right or cut it too early or in the wrong spot that Denzel was able to cut underneath it, or was that a throw issue? No. I mean, it's certainly as, you, as you're using those movement passes, and, and Denzel's a good corner. And there's sometimes, I think, um, when you give those moves earlier or later, uh, without – Bob cannot be evasive. You don't want to sound like you're making an excuse for somebody, but – we can certainly execute that better. All parties involved. Uh, now, at one point, uh, at halftime, you guys were being outgained by 120 some odd yards, and they had held the ball a yeah. long time. But are you cognizant of that? Absolutely. Game? Okay, so yeah, you feel it over there. I mean, you know, that's where our defense. You got to give them credit. I mean, they did have some yards, but we made some plays situationally, and they had the ball almost 11 minutes more than we did. They lead the league in time possession, and we had some pretty good drives to start the game. We only had really three drives. I mean, I don't count the kneel down. That's what I was um, talking about after the game. I think Josh asked me that. So we had like 19 real plays in the first half. And it does. I mean, that's, that's a credit to Cleveland. That's how they play. And, and they're coming out. We try to be aggressive coming out of half. And then you don't hit it. And we're off track. And we don't convert on third down. Well, some of that maybe is that, hey, I, I want to eat some clock. I want to control tempo. When you go in that long stretch of runs, or you, that those two aren't connecting at that point. It's more just about that individual drive. Well, no, I mean, the, there there's things even before the interception. We were trying to make sure we stayed on balance. I mean, where the score is, the situation, you could feel it. I mean, there, the thing I'll say is the way that drive went, it wasn't like, hey, I'm calling a run every time. And when we were having success, we were changing up schemes, what we were doing to in that drive, changing up backs. And the way we were going, we were having a lot of success. And that's where I give our fans a lot of credit. Um, the energy has been real this year in the stadium by the by the fans. You could certainly feel it in the fourth quarter. I mean, the whole place, I mean, it felt like us and the Browns early in the third quarter. It was 
it, there was a lull. Felt like you're at church. So <laughs> maybe the drive kind of helped wake everybody up. Um, yeah, but the game was still, it was very close. As long, you know, somebody told me, I guess, when we started the third quarter, I like some of the other games, they didn't even gotten to halftime yet. Is that true? I don't, somebody said that. I don't know if that's true. Yeah. yeah. Like everybody, I'd start myself, wasn't perfect. There's always work to be done and be an objective, but Chris is playing really good football for us. And I'm not making light of the, those grades, whatever. I, you appreciate it because what you want is that you want people to care about this game, whether I agree with it or not. I mean, that's hard. I think the best thing I've ever heard from a guy that's won a lot of Super Bowls was, you know, you may know a certain scheme, this and that, but you don't know what's being said in the meeting, how they're teaching it. You got it's all educated guess, you know, and that's not a shot at anybody. And that, I don't want to make light because I, I do appreciate the people that cover this. People care. That's why we have the jobs. And uh, I don't take that lightly. So I don't want to upset, upset anybody in their avatars today. So people that live through their avatars. But, but Chris playing good football. When you first took this job in your very first press conference, I don't know if you remember saying this or not, but one of the first people that you called out that you were looking forward to working with was Young Way Koo and Chris Lindstrom. Yeah. When you think back to that time, what did you know about Chris Lindstrom at that time, and what yeah, do you now know about him now? Know a lot about Chris. Uh, you know, we obviously did a lot of work on him when I was in Tennessee. We liked him. Uh, figured we weren't going to have a chance to get him because where you go in the draft. And then, um, so I mean, that's what my charge every year. I think you need to to know this league, and that's why you take the time to to learn people in the draft, the free agency. Whether you you have the opportunity to coach them now or later, everything comes come. come comes full circle uh, when it comes back up. So Chris was somebody, you know, I did a, we had done a lot of work on. Uh, Young Way was another guy. Ironically, I think we had him in a tryout at Tennessee and I knew a lot about him from our special teams coach there. Coach, you're four games in. I know your coaches don't do a lot of introspection during the season, but your fourth best rushing attack only gave 168 yards per game. Obviously, that's by design, but obviously you weren't that successful at it last year. And so, you know, this is clearly – everything that you've kind of built to this point. Mm -hmm. How much pride are you taking in the fact that you've been able to change that narrative about this team? Yeah, that's why you don't give up. I mean, we were pretty convicted, even though the numbers didn't show it last year. There was progress being made. We changed a lot of things, too. I never wanted to just, you know, I think you get in trouble. You come from somewhere else. You don't assess it and think you're going to kind of hit print and you have the same success. But there's a buildup to it. It's a long process, and it's slow and sometimes painful. It's just some things we've adapted to in a way that, um, things have been trending around the league and you're trying to stay ahead of it and evolve, but we changed a lot of things. So there was some painful uh, growing pains, but I did think there was progress regardless of the numbers. And it's, it's nice that, that it's starting to, to pay off, but the trick will be to keep it up because this is a really good run defense. We're getting ready to play down in Tampa and you can't keep doing the same things over and over because there's, um, this league's too competitive with too many smart coaches and players. So that's the whole step is improvement week to week. It seems like since the Saints game, your team has been the dominant team in the fourth quarter um, between your opponents. Obviously, every coach is going to want to kind of have that as part of that team's identity. But is there anything you can attribute that to in these past three games? Yeah, I mean, I just believe in the way our guys work. There's no shortcuts. Um, you can come watch our guys practice. They don't, they don't take plays off. And uh, I don't know any other way to be in shape other than to do it. I mean, there's shortcuts. Maybe you can order one of those uh, things that's supposed to stimulate your muscles, right, to get you fit. I don't know. Uh, those really work. Yeah, do you use that? <laughs> I need to get the one you're on then. Uh, it's working for you. It may not be working as well for me. Uh, there's no shortcuts. Our guys work hard, and, and you're doing that as you're trying to manage. Obviously, we know this is a tough game, and, and you know, as you get into the season, you got to be careful you know, how you practice, but our guys work. Going back to that 14 running play, running uh, sequence, it looked like before that happened, Dave Ragone had gotten the offense together and was mm -hmm. kind of, you know, giving them a, you know, get them fired up a little bit. Was there a intention from the coaching yeah, staff to kind of change the... Call the offense up. That's what I said on the headset. 
I got a lot of faith in Dave, and that's the good thing about having Dave down there and Dean, which I've been way more comfortable with this year, being able to talk to us. One thing on the headset when they're upstairs, but I like that because it allows me I don't have to turn my back as much to the game. It allows me, to, in my opinion, to be a better head coach. So it just goes like this. Actually, to the left side. Dave, get the offense together and, and get them going. And Dave's done a terrific job with that, and that's, you know, that's why I got a lot of faith in our staff. Who was the best decision to have them up or down this year with you well, versus we could talk to them. You know, I said I'm not going to ask somebody to do it if they didn't want to, you know, with Dean calling it down there. But he'd done it both ways. He called it down in ba I mean, Baltimore, New England. And what do you think is best for the team? And I like having Dave down there again because it, it allows me to not have to turn my back as much. And I can communicate to Dave whether we're talking about players, coaches, and he can do a great job coordinating behind me. That's what he is, the coordinator. And we have such a really uh, good working relationship, and I think Dave's doing a terrific job. But it does. It's, it's nice where I don't feel like I'd be the head coach with Dave. He can say things, and then when Dave does it, and he's got his own style to it, it's, it's impactful. It's important. You talked a lot about that 14 run sequence of how you switch things up scheme wise and everything else. I know you won't say it, but I'll say it for you. Uh, that just makes you smarter than the guy you're going against because you're continually a step ahead of them um, when it comes to scheme and everything else. Like that chess match that you're in each week, how much do you enjoy that? How much do you prepare for that in those matchups? And how much do you enjoy watching that come out of the field? You know, yeah. you're a step ahead. Well, you know, I'm not. You, uh, it's an, you have to stay objective. Like I said, there's nothing that can humble you faster than the National Football League. And we got a heck of a challenge this week and gone, gone against Todd Bowles a few times, uh, Tennessee and when I was the coordinator. And, and obviously last year, and knew him when I was on the staff at Tennessee when he was the D coordinator in Arizona and we got into a uh, overtime game with him in Nashville uh, in 2013. And then uh, we went up there and played him in the Jets and you know, seen a lot of them. And uh, he's a f fantastic football coach. And so, and, you know, it won't be him and he and I playing, but, but he's a really good coach and they got a good scheme. And so I love that stuff. And that's why I like to coach. 